Welcome to 5-Minute German Grammar. Thank you for watching. This presentation will introduce dare words in the nominative and accusative cases. In an earlier presentation, we looked at definite articles in the nominative and accusative cases. These articles form the first two rows of the chart you see on the screen. As we will see in this presentation, the endings of these definite articles will influence the endings that dare words take. In fact, dare words are so called since their endings are almost the same as the endings of definite articles. There are several different dare words in German. Some of the more frequently used include jed, each, every, solch, such a, such, manch, many a, many, and jen, that, those. Like definite articles, the endings for these dare words are determined by the number, gender, and case of the noun they modify. I will give you some examples on how to do this at the end of this presentation. Two dare words you will use a lot are dies, this, these, and welch, which. It is important to note that dare words can sometimes also be called dieser words. As you can see on the screen, the endings for dare words are very similar to those for definite articles. The only difference you should note are the neuter nominative and accusative endings. The definite article here ends in AS, whereas dare words have an ES ending. And here's the chart from the prior slide with just dies displayed. Let's walk through a few examples now, starting first with the masculine forms. In the first sentence, ich bin jener Mann, I am that man, it is easy to see that the ER ending on jen resembles the masculine definite article in the nominative case. In the sentence right below, ich sehe diesen Mann, I see this man, the en ending on dies looks like the masculine definite article in the accusative case. Let's take a look at the feminine forms. In the first sentence on this slide, ich bin jene Frau, I am that woman, you can see that the e ending on jen resembles the feminine definite article in the nominative case. In the sentence right below, ich sehe diese Frau, I see this woman, the e ending on dies looks like the feminine definite article in the accusative case. Now on to the neuter forms. In the first sentence here, ich bin jedes Mädchen, I am that girl, you can see that the es ending on jen is close to the neuter definite article in the nominative case, but does not fully resemble it. In the sentence right below, ich sehe dieses Mädchen, I see this girl, the es ending on dies is close to the neuter definite article in the accusative case. You'll recall that neuter definite articles in both nominative and accusative cases end in AS, whereas dare words have an ES ending. Now let's take a look at the plural forms. In the first sentence, wir sind jene Menschen, we are those people, you can see that the E ending on jen resembles the plural definite article in the nominative case. And in the second sentence, wir sehen diese Menschen, we see these people, you can see that the E ending on dies resembles a plural definite article in the accusative case. It's important to pay attention to other details in the sentence to help distinguish between dare word endings. In the first sentence, the first person singular verb form bin helps me determine that the ending on the dare word must be feminine nominative. However, in the second sentence, the first person plural verb form sind tells me that the ending must be plural nominative. The same advice holds for neuter dare word endings. In the first sentence, the nominative personal pronoun ich, when used with the linking verb bin, suggests that Mädchen will be a predicate noun, which requires the dare word to take a nominative neuter ending. In the second sentence, however, Mädchen receives the action of the transitive verb, which requires the dare word to take an accusative neuter ending. Finally, although we can use dare words almost anywhere in a sentence, since welch is an interrogative, it must always come in the first position. For a speaker of English, this may sound a bit unusual. In the first sentence, the typical order between subject, verb, and direct object is maintained. In the second sentence, however, the direct object comes in the first position on account of using welch. You may want to review the presentations on German syntax and interrogatives to refresh this concept. The five-minute German grammar series is produced by David Neville, Associate Professor of German. 
The videos, scripts, and lecture slides are released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0 international license. Don't be a square. Remix and share.